Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Caroline McGraw with The Clearing, and today we're here to talk about how to heal hopelessness and despair, as well as help prevent suicide. So obviously, this is a really hard topic that we're addressing today. There are a lot of really tough stories. And if you have a really tough story, if you have lost a loved one to suicide, know that we are here and our hearts go out to you. My heart goes out to you. It is really hard to lose someone that way. And part of why we're doing this video is we want to help prevent as many preventable deaths as we can. So first, first and foremost, if you or someone you love is in a serious crisis, we want to urge you to stop watching and call either 911 or the National Suicide Hotline, which is 800-273-8255. Once again, that number is 800-273-8255. Do not wait to call, do not hesitate if you or someone you love is thinking about suicide. Don't assume you should handle it all on your own. Don't put that on yourself. There are people who are trained to help and often the most loving thing you can do for yourself or for another person is to ask for help. So assuming this is not an immediate crisis for you, everyone who's in crisis has already left and is calling the appropriate helpers. So if you're not in crisis, what can you do if someone that you love is really struggling? We have a bunch of blog posts that can help with this, and I will post the links in this video once it's finished recording. But first, let's just talk through some really practical steps that you can take. So the first thing to do, it sounds really basic, but it's really hard. It, this is one of those things that's a lot easier to actually talk about than it is to do, which is to listen without trying to fix. Listen without trying to fix. I know that it is tempting to go really positive right away. If someone is coming to you and they're, they're struggling and they just don't see the point and they don't want to keep going, then it's really tempting to go into this very positive place to kind of counterbalance the negative energy. It's kind of like being the, the uh, Tigger to their Eeyore. <laughs> um, and you might say things like, oh my goodness, but you're amazing. You have so much to live for. I love you so much. And that can be helpful to, for the person to know that they're loved, obviously. But it can also be really helpful for you to just hold space. Just hold space. Just listen. It's not your job to fix it. It's just your job to bear witness and to listen with love for the person. Try that. Just be present and hold love in your heart. And the cool thing about this is that it actually takes the pressure off of the person who is struggling. And here's why. So have you ever been in a really bad mood? And you've had somebody, you know, a well-meaning friend or a spouse or a parent try and kind of like jolly you out of it. Just, oh, come on, you'll be fine. You can do it, rah, rah, rah. And sometimes that does help. But other times it can kind of compound the problem because you feel bad about feeling bad. You feel this guilt or this shame or this like, oh, I should be out of this by now. I should be doing better. And that compounds the problem. So paradoxically, sometimes if we just open up space for somebody to feel as sad as they feel, they actually feel a lift after being with us because they're able to stop pressuring themselves to feel better. They're able to stop feeling bad about feeling bad. This is really common. A lot of people feel bad about feeling bad. And if you can be the kind of person who's like, okay, you feel bad around me. That's fine. I'll sit with you in that. I won't try and fix it. Then counterintuitively, that can help people to feel better. Another thing you can do is to reflect back to the person what they're saying. This is a form of validation. It's a form of active listening. And as you're doing this, here's a, here's a quick tip. It can be helpful to say 
I hear that you're feeling sad as opposed to, I see that you are sad. That's a small distinction, but it can help people to cue into the reality that they're more than their feeling state at any given moment. So feeling sad is different from being sad. And you can feel sad and acknowledge that you are bigger than the sadness and the sadness is not all of you. Another practical tip, ask people what's going on. You don't need to tiptoe. It's not helpful to pretend that someone is not in deep despair. That actually makes it worse. <laughs> so I know it can be, it can be seductive to just kind of pretend that it's not, it's not happening, but that's not helpful. Don't go there. That's more about trying to protect yourself than it is to help the other person. So ask them what's really going on. And Johnny just left a comment. So many people shame people for being depressed. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. And if you can be the person who is loving and accepting rather than shaming, that can be a huge help. And another practical tip. So respect the person enough to take them seriously. Often people fear, what if I'm overreacting? What if I'm not reading this right? But if your gut feeling tells you that someone you love is in trouble, go with that. We see a lot of tough cases. We see a lot of participants who have really hard histories. And in most cases, the most dangerous thing is not to say anything, is not to ask for help. And respect the person enough to take them seriously. If they're not being serious, that is their problem. That is not your problem. In addition, when you are looking for a professional, we get a lot of questions from folks about you know, how do I find someone to work with? What should I be looking for? If you're dealing with hopelessness and despair, you want someone who will work with you on all levels of self. So what that means is you want to work with the hopelessness and despair on a mental level. You want to question your judgments and your limiting beliefs and adopt some thoughts that feel healthier and feel better for you. But you also want to work on the emotional level. You want to work with the feeling of hopelessness. And here's one practical way that you can do that right now, today. So if you or someone you love is really struggling with just feeling incredibly depressed, incredibly down, sad, helpless, hopeless, what we would suggest is to try something called following the energy back. So setting the stage for this, here's what it looks like. Find a quiet place as much as you can, center yourself, get grounded, get as calm as you possibly can be in the moment. And then identify the feeling in your body, feel where the hopelessness or the despair is, and just sit with it. Don't try to fix it, just let it be. And then ask yourself, when have I felt this way before? And a lot of things are probably gonna come to your mind. There's going to be a lot of history, but really sift it, sift it like you're sifting um, sand at the beach in one of those little kid toy things where they sift out the shells and just keep sifting through your mind until you get to a memory that's as far back as you can remember. And that is the first time you can really remember feeling specifically that way. And you'll know that you've got it because it has this kind of internal resonance. It feels like bong, like, ooh, yeah, that's it. I've hit something there. And then you, you look at that memory and you look at what was happening there, what was going on. And you let that part of you, that younger part of you, tell the truth, say what it needs to say, feel what it needs to feel. And you listen to it, you give it space, you validate it you treat that younger part of you the way you would treat a friend who's struggling with that hopelessness and that despair. And then you offer your past self compassion and you ask, you know, what would help you to feel loved and safe now? You know, the next time I feel this way, we feel this way. What do you think we should do about that? And really work together to come at a solution that will help you to both feel safe. The adult you is in the leadership position and the younger you is still a part of you, but the older you has the job of taking care of the younger you.
So it's called reparenting is the technical term. So that's just one example of um, emotional work that you can do when you follow that energy back and you work with the part of you that first felt that hopelessness and that despair. And often what you'll see is that the pain you're experiencing today is a magnified version of the unresolved pain that you didn't deal with back then. And rightfully so. You probably didn't have the tools, the resources, the support, the know-how. There's no blame here. There's no blame that at five years old, at seven years old, at 20 years old, you, you didn't deal with it. That's okay. You're dealing with it now. You're here now. You have the resources and the ability to deal with it now. So again, there are plenty more strategies. That's just one strategy that we feel is really helpful for our participants because it can help you untangle what seems like a really dark, twisty thread. So thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Our hearts go out to you if you are dealing with this, but know that it is possible to heal. Know that we work with people every day who heal from these issues. So you are not alone. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Bye.